Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I am on vacation. I am, in fact, in a place called Pismo Beach, which, if you are a fan of Bugs Bunny, you might remember because he was trying to get there but forgot to take a left turn at Albuquerque, which, if my mapping skills are correct, that means that Bugs Bunny is actually from Mexico, so, you know, hey, many things I like are from Mexico. Anyway, yeah. Pismo Beach is very close to Vandenberg Air Force Base, which means that I occasionally come here to see missile, or sorry, rocket launches. Yesterday morning, purely coincidentally, they actually had not one, but two rocket launches out of Vandenberg. And this is an interesting development because Vandenberg isn't just a place where they launch, uh, you know, payloads to orbit from using SpaceX and ULA. It's also a place where they test ICBMs and missile intercept systems. So this was a test of the ground-based intercept uh, system, where they attempt to intercept ICBMs or the warheads while they are still in space. This is a mid-course intercept system. And that's, you know, to be distinct from, say, the terminal high-altitude defense system, right, THADS, where you are trying to catch the warheads as they enter the war uh, as they enter the atmosphere at the last minute before they hit the target. Most missile defense systems use this, and uh, there's some great footage of, say, the Sprint missile leaving its silo and accelerating towards its target at a rate of acceleration that can only be considered Kerbal. You know, 100 Gs of acceleration reaching Mach 10 within about 10 seconds. It goes so fast inside the atmosphere that its skin glows quite hot. At the other end, of course, you have boost phase intercept, which is usually confined to things like directed energy weapons, where you can shoot the missile as it is launching out of its silos and is still full of fuel and other volatiles, making it an easy target. Mid-course intercept, on the other hand, captures the warhead while it is still in space, while it is just cruising along, minding its own business, affected by nothing more than the force of gravity. Out here, it is a bit more vulnerable, or at least one would hope. So the ground-based intercept system is a contract which is it's like a collaboration between Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, and yeah, they, they launched two of these against a warhead which was launched out of Kwajalein Atoll. So the idea is the booster is um, the booster is an all-solid multi-stage booster that, which is actually derived from the Pegasus XL, which we of course see is used to launch payloads into space. The payload on this is something called an exo-atmospheric kill vehicle that's been developed by Raytheon. And it's pretty cool. It's, you know, a small payload, maybe less than 60 kilograms. It has a bunch of engines on it. It has a telescope, an infrared telescope on it, and its entire job is that once it is launched into an approximate intercept trajectory, it is going to steer itself onto the target and collide with it at a relative velocity of about 10 kilometers per second, which will destroy most things. So one would wonder why they launched two of them. Well, uh, as to, well, up until now, the success rate of this system in tests has been about 50%. So I guess launching two of them demonstrates the, you know, a greater chance of reliability, but more, well, realistically, the documentation or the press release, the press reports, press release, yeah, it's a press release, tells us that after the first um, exo-atmospheric kill vehicle found its target, the second one automatically then retargeted against the largest chunks of debris, the things that it thought was most likely to be a still potentially dangerous target and hit it. So they actually hit the target twice at 10 kilometers per second, which is, you're pretty much like shooting the person in the head twice because the first time wasn't successful. Yeah, the videos on this are pretty impressive, pretty cool. And yeah, I talked to a bunch of random people here and they all saw it flying out, a pair of warheads launching within you, you, within a moments of each other, I don't know how long what the difference was, but it's it's kind of cool to see not one but two launches going out of here. 
Vandenberg's also home, incidentally, to you know ICBM test ranges and things like that. And there's another, I don't know if you've seen, there's a great video from Kwajalein Atoll where they talk about a missile test out of Vandenberg. And they, they showed the warheads, the nuclear, you know, the dummy nuclear warheads re-entering the atmosphere and hitting a target which is less than, you know, 100 meters across. It's kind of scary seeing these warheads streak through the atmosphere. These are basically, you know, this is what Armageddon looks like. I also think it's interesting that the video in question follows the team after the test where they go back to a local watering hole and then drink yards of beer equivalent to the number of yards by which they missed the target. Which, okay, that is a pretty interesting ritual and I'd be happy to help them out sometime. But it's even more interesting in light of NASA conducting you know, culture reviews of ULA and SpaceX because they think that people might be having too much of a life. <laughs> but anyway, you know, the Kwajalein Atoll is, of course, the place where SpaceX launched its Falcon 1 rockets, all five of them. Obviously, only two of those were successful. But yeah, I'm uh, floating around Southern California. I'm trying to meet some really cool people, make some interesting videos while I'm here. But I thought it was worth talking about this launch out of Vandenberg. So yeah, as I said, I'm floating around Southern California hoping to get some you know, video and pictures of interesting rocket style stuff while having that vacation with the family. And I'm going to point out, you know, Pismo Beach is pretty close to Vandenberg. If you just happen to be coming out here with your know, wives and kids and other people that aren't quite as interested in rockets, it's not a bad place to come. So yeah, uh, expect a few random videos doing random things over the next few days. And then I'll be back to my regular schedule. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.